is everybody doing today? This is Rich on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest. It is Andrew Pollard, the CEO of BlackRock Gold. How are you doing today, Andrew? Very good. Very good to be here with you, Rich. I'm great to have you here. Now, BlackRock Gold is a precious metals exploration company with two projects in Nevada. Can you tell us a bit more about the company and why these two projects are so exciting? Yeah, well, I mean, exciting is a good word for it because um, since uh, about four or five months ago, we've emerged as one of the best performing uh, gold and silver stocks on the TSX Venture Exchange. Um, we're focused in Nevada, which um, if this were Roman times in the in the gold space, Nevada would be, I mean, it's the place to be. It's, you know, home to one of the world's largest gold mining complexes. And in terms of jurisdictions, I mean, our projects are, one of our projects is three hours from Reno and the other projects about three hours from Las Vegas. So, I don't mind, you know, site visits are a pretty fun time down there. Um, but uh, what, yeah, so we've, um, uh, we've really emerged in the past few months on the back of uh, uh, acquisition we did in February. Um, the market didn't take notice at the time, because if you remember what was going on at the end of February, I mean, the day we announced it um, uh, was the same day the World Health Organization put out their very first global health emergency order, and it sent the Dow just tanking. Yeah. Uh, followed by, you know, probably four of the five worst days in Dow, hit Dow history. So our stock actually sold off on this news. I thought it was going to be pretty good. And it was turned out fabulous. But we went from 20 cents at the end of February down to seven cents. And, wow. you know, um, uh, you know, it's one of, this is hiding in plain sight. And it's sort of the story of our project, because the project that we got uh, this time 100 years ago would have been one of the most significant mining districts uh, in all of the United States. And we just got... Uh, our hands on half of this entire district. And it took decades to consolidate many individual claims packages put together. And we're now the very first group to ever go in and target these historic workings. And this is one of uh, the highest grade silver districts in North America and is certainly one of the largest in terms of historic production. So um, we only really started talking about it again, you know, once people started coming out from under their desks in like, you know, end of April, early May. And then, you know, finally, when we start shining a spotlight on all these different historic mines, which are on our property, people are like, holy cow, they started taking notice. And we went from, you know, seven cents all the way up to a buck 60 on, uh, on um, uh, the release of our very first assay, the very first drill hole into our project. Um, so we've since come out with, uh, uh, we're, we're doing the maiden uh, round of drilling ever done on this property. Before in the old days, they just mined this stuff. The veins were so rich and straight from surface. Um, uh, but we're the first group to ever drill into them. And yeah, we released our very first drill hole in uh, the beginning, uh, sorry, at the end of July, uh, added about $100 million to our valuation because the market realized it wasn't just promotions. It wasn't just us, you know, arm waving about an old project. We, we put a whole lot of fresh life into this one new mine. And then um, uh, just a few days ago, we, we released the results from... Uh, uh, the second target of our property, which uh, uh, was also a historic mine, and uh, we announced our second discovery. So we've, we've released two sets of results from our maiden drill program, which is still ongoing, uh, and we've announced two different discoveries. We've, we've hit, uh, on eight drill holes, we've hit nine high-grade veins, four of which uh, those veins assayed over a kilogram per ton silver equivalent. So, I mean, it's almost too good to be true, but we finally sort of, it's been a shot of adrenaline in the heart for uh uh, the market and yeah we've it's been a hell of a ride so far now you just released some very impressive results from the drill program which you touched on at your tonopah west project can mm -hmm. you give us the rundown on those recent discoveries yeah so we our very first drill hole um you know this was into a mine a historic mine that i mean these guys are mining it uh for a couple decades and they got all the way down to about uh it's an underground mine they mined it down to about the 1880 foot level but then they got turned around because uh, I guess they were below the water table. So water started uh, inflowing. And um, uh, back in those days, uh, uh, elect I guess electricity was, uh, was just coming online. So they brought in these electric water pumps. Uh, the water pumps worked fine. Unfortunately, electricity wasn't all that reliable in 1920. Uh, so what happened was, uh, you know, rolling brownouts and blackouts would happen. And um, uh, that's not what you want for when you've got uh, underground miners, you know, 1,800 feet below Earth is to have. Uh, uh, below surface to, to have water rushing in unexpectedly. So they stopped mining it. And where they stopped mining it 100 years ago, the vein was 24 meters thick. Like we have all these records that show that the veins were 24 meters thick. And this is one of the, the largest producing veins in the entire district. 
and uh, they just stopped mining it because of the water. Well, a few years after that, um, uh, the metal pre silver prices went from a dollar down to 35 cents in the span of a couple of years. So what does that mean? Uh, even though they paid all this money to, to buy these diesel uh, uh, generators and bring in these new water pumps, which took a couple of years to build, right as they were commissioning them, silver prices tanked uh, and it, it just become un uneconomic. No one's ever been in there since then. So what did we do for our very first drill hole? We set it up about 20 meters away from right where they stopped mining it. So we told the market, we're gonna hit something probably 20 to 30 meters, you know, probably around a kilogram per ton silver equivalent. Uh, no one believed us. Uh, and then guess what our first hole was, our drill hole was, it was 29 meters of a kilogram per ton silver equivalent. Uh, it was almost, so, you know, it, you know, most, the market was surprised, but we weren't. But the most encouraging thing about that was that our, our model was holding true. And we've got uh, four different target areas on our property, which we're all going to be drilling in the next few months. So we have the opportunity to make not one, not two, but four different new discoveries on our property. And I mean, even on that first hole, we knew um, that there was going to be uh, this big, thick vein. We knew how thick it would be and what the grades would roughly be. But because we're the first group to ever drill into it, um, we actually encountered two other veins right on top of it. And one of those was over 36 hundred grams per ton silver equivalent you know that had 18 grams per ton gold in it just so, you know so you know you're finding things that even the historic miners didn't know were there and they were in the mining these things for decades but you know on one drill hole we brought one historic mine effectively back to life like we're showing that there's a a, a really good chance of a big ore body there uh, and then the second set of results which we just came out with went to the second target area it was actually owned by the same company that was mining um, this one down to the 1800 uh, foot level and got turned around. When they got turned around by all that water, they put all of their resources into the second mine on our property and were mining that. And they got down to about the 1600 foot level there uh, before they went, before everything went kaput because of low metals prices. So same thing we did at our first target, we went and did our second target. We just set the drills right up, uh, right where they stopped mining. And we hit a whole bunch of veins. We hit five different veins in this area. So, uh, you know, our first area, we hit three. Mm -hmm. This area, we hit five. And then there's another area, a third target area, where we released one hole. And uh, we hit a vein there, 562 grams over a meter and a half. So this is a project that, um, uh, honestly, it's been hiding in plain sight for 100 years. The reason no one's had it before was because back in the old days, I mean, these are all private land. So the, the claims are individually owned. Uh, and they were staked 120 years ago. It was discovered in 1900. So back then they limited the amount of uh, uh, claims anyone could have. And these have been passed down through generation to generation and, and uh, I guess historic company to historic company. But it's more of a real estate consolidation play than an exploration prowess play in the sense that this is fishing with dynamite. This is, you know, we're not, even though, uh, even though to the market, it seems like we're making these new discoveries, we're really just going into old mines and expanding uh, the resources. So it's very straightforward because we know where the veins should be, uh, which way they're going and stuff. And I mean, yeah, eight drill holes, nine veins encountered, four of which over a kilogram. It doesn't get better than this. So No, that's incredible. Now, what are the next steps at the Tenopa West? Yeah, so we're uh, lots of drilling and hopefully lots of adding more value through exploration. We're still, you know, we, we're only midway through our very first drill program here. So we've got uh, originally, we were going to do 7,000 meter program, then we expanded it to 10,000 because it was looking pretty good. Uh, we just announced we're going to expand it even more to 20,000 meters. So uh, what that means is lots of drilling, uh, lots of, um, uh, lots of, uh, we got two different uh, drill rigs going right now, going 24 seven. So uh, for, between now and the end of the year, just we're going to try and prove up as many ounces and try and expand uh, we'll make as many new discoveries as we can. We've got four different areas we're trying to breathe life into and then expand the footprint in all areas. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting uh, ride for us for the next little month, but it's, it's sure been a fun few months uh, leading up to this. I bet. Now, BlackRock completed a $7.5 million private placement last month. Congratulations on that. A large portion of which came from mining legend Eric Sprott, which we love to talk about. He is like Mr. Silver. Um, can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, Eric approached us uh, literally the day of our first uh, discovery drill hole, which was that 29 meter uh, hits with about a kilogram per ton silver. And, and uh, yeah, he wanted to do a deal. We actually just completed a private placement a few weeks before that for four and a half million bucks, which wow. funded, um, you know, this initial drilling. But 
Um, you know, obviously it's center stock skyrocketing and, and obviously it sort of proved our concept down there. So yeah, as you said, Eric uh, is probably the biggest silver bug uh, in the world right now. And, and he knows his stuff. Uh, he's, he was familiar with the district going into it and I think just wanted a proof of concept and we delivered that and uh, yeah, money talks. He, he uh, wrote a big check. He invested 5 million bucks. Uh, a few other associated companies invested in that and uh, we're now well positioned to uh, go through the end of the year here with, with what we're planning on. That's great. Now, since you joined BlackRock Gold last May, the company has made significant turnaround. What attracted you to BlackRock and what have you done to bring value to shareholders? Seven cents all the way to over a dollar. Incredible returns from shareholders. What you see? Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, you know, I actually came into BlackRock not through inspiration, but desperation. I was a shareholder in the company before. Oh, wow. Um, and I uh, just, it was... It, uh, to say it was mismanaged would be an understatement from my perspective. I mean, nothing was done. Um, so, you know, I, I, I would use the word management very loosely. But effectively, when I joined the company, it was insolvent. It was trading at three cents, uh, if it had any bid whatsoever. Uh, and uh, I saw a project, sorry, I saw a company that had a really good project in it. And that was uh, our Silver Cloud project in northern Nevada, which we still have. And we're going to be drilling too soon. Um, but I saw the wrong team behind it. And I, you know, I've got a pretty big Rolodex for the last 15 years. Uh, uh, I've, I've been a consultant to mining companies, building management teams. I, I ran an, uh, what's called an executive search firm. So, uh, you know, I put together boards and I put together CEOs and, and management teams to ensure that the right people were behind the right projects. I had a lot of skin in the game with BlackRock, um, but I, I invested in them originally, not based off the management team. I was myopic about the project they had. Well, you know, the right project, but the wrong team, I figured who better to come in and try and roll their sleeves up and solve it. So all I did was I, I you know, effectively reconstituted the entire board and I just went about uh, putting one foot in front of the other. I, I hired, uh, the very first hire we made was bringing on a new executive chairman whose name is Bill Howald. Bill used to be head of exploration for Placer Dome, which was, uh, I think, the third largest gold mining company on the planet. He had oversight uh, uh, over all their stuff in Nevada and, and all of the Americas actually. And they were taken out by Barrick in 2005 for about $10 billion US. So I got Bill uh, at here and he's been, he's, you know, a real mover and shaker in Nevada. And he's added over a hundred million ounces of gold uh, to um, uh, projects throughout his career. So he's the guy to get the job done. Um, and since then we've just gone about building a team and, um, and, you know, we, we acquired this project recently and, yeah, this is you know with Bill at the at the helm. I mean, he he knows how to uh, he knows how to add ounces and scale up programs. So I think we're we're really well positioned now. Now, Andrew, you mentioned this before. You became the CEO. You're a management consultant for mining companies. That's a huge step to become the CEO of a public company and actually successful. Um, why is a good management team so essential in this industry? Yeah, well, it, it, at the time I stepped in, it was a little a bit of a demotion because, frankly, it was embarrassing to step into a company that was uh, three cents and trading at like a million dollars market cap and insolvent. But, uh, you know, I didn't want to uh, see it. I didn't want to see shareholders go, you know, belly up. So uh, I took a big step back in pain, took on a lot of risk, risk to do this. But, um, yeah, it's been very satisfying because literally, you know, for 15 years prior, I'd, I'd been, you know, my business was selling one thing and that's the management matters. And, uh uh, you know, I, I've always known the value of it all along, but it's nice to show that, you know, you can have the, the, the right project with the wrong team behind it and it can go straight into the ground. And then all you do is make a few key changes and all of a sudden you're one of the best performing companies on the venture exchange. So, um, yeah, it's pretty satisfying. Certainly, uh, you know, if I ever, it, it, you know, if we, it, if I ever depart BlackRock, I think people will be uh, shaking me down to come and help them build boards from, from here on in. But uh, yeah, uh, right now this has been a fun change of pace too. I was only going to do it for a few months and write the ship, but turns out, uh, you know, when, when you capture lightning in a bottle sometimes and you have a good center, synergy with people, you, you don't kick a gift horse in the mouth, in the mouth and you, you ride it. So that's what we're doing right now. That's great. Now what should investors look out for from BlackRock in the coming months? Yeah, well, hopefully lots of drill results. Um, you know, we're, we've got two rigs going uh, full time at Tonopah West, so we hope to make more discoveries. More than that, now that we've confirmed where the veins are and where we confirm that we can hit them, we want to keep doing step outs and try and build up as much, show as much potential ounces as possible. And I mean, these, these are high grade ounces and they're in, you know, probably the best jurisdiction in the world. So they should be worth more than anyone on the uh, on the planet, uh, uh, you know, someone wanted to acquire us. Something very unique about our district is the fact that it's a 
pure play, it's a primary silver district, which is very rare. Uh, it's the historic production was about 100 to one silver to gold ratio. So for every 100 uh, ounces of silver, there'd be one ounce gold. Uh, silver is normally a byproduct of other mines. So, and generally like uh, about two thirds of all silver production comes from base metals like lead and zinc and copper mines. So if, if those commodities are tanking or, or uh, you know, I'm not doing so well, but silver prices go, these monster mines in Chile and, and other places, they can't scale up to capture that silver credit. Well, silver's gone ballistic in the last few months and, and every, you know, people like Sprott and, you know, whether you like silver or you like gold, we've got a pure play precious metals district. And guess what? Uh, if we prove up ounces, this is something that could be scaled up really, really quickly to, um, uh, to capitalize on, on a nice emerging bull run of precious metals. So it's very unique as well. Now, what is the best way for investors to get in touch with you? Yeah, uh, I'd certainly um, uh, refer uh, anyone to our website first, which is blackrockgoldcorp.com. Um, but I always love chatting with investors, especially new ones, or if there's questions, uh, always available by email. Um, my email is just andrew at blackrockgoldcorp.com. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Andrew. We wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. You've done a phenomenal job since taking over. And I'm assuming that this will continue. And now you got guys like, you know, Eric Sprott, who is one of the biggest silver guys on the planet behind you in the deal. So congratulations on all your success and our entire community will be watching you very closely as you guys continue to progress. Thank you very much. It was great being here. Thank you, Andrew. Have a great day. Cheers.